All right, so I figured I'd do one more video before I end up going to bed. And that is going to be, I want to kind of at least get set up for our destroying instance function. Like, I want to get that good and working. So basically, if we head over here to building visual, where we have our spawn building. We have interacting building, that instance, and we pass in socket data. Now, if we go back to what socket data holds, this is a type of F building socket data. Actually, apparently I can just go to that. Can I? No, I can't. So F building socket data, we have the instance mesh component, the index, and that's realistically all we need. So we have those two things. So we can use that information to destroy, well, destroy our instances. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this take in, well, what I just said. So just like where we have our add instance function, F building socket data, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So let's head up to destroy instance, go to the header, and change the parameters to take in a constant F building socket data, pass by reference, and let's call it building socket data. Let's copy all that, go back to the .cpp and replace the information. And what we can do is remove all the stuff we have there, and we're just gonna do a check. So first off, if building socket data dot instance component, just to be safe, what we're gonna do is building socket data dot instance component. We are going to, let's see, what was it that we call to actually remove? It is remove instance, that's what it is. So we're gonna call remove instance on building socket data dot index. And that'll take care of that because the parameter that takes in is the instance index, which is what this holds. So now we just gotta call that. So I'm gonna do this kind of as a test more than anything. So I'm not too worried about it. We're just gonna set up a simple function and call it from blueprint. And then later on, we're gonna set it up and actually, you know, make it, uh, I guess you could say pleasant to use in the builder. So for example, we have set build mode and spawn building. So we're gonna basically replicate this function. So here we have spawn building. Let's create another one and let's call it destroy building instance. Create the definition. And we're just gonna copy what's in spawn building. And we're gonna go from the builder and just call destroy instance. So now we gotta create that function. So in building visual.h, we're gonna do void, destroy instance, create the definition. And because we are already calling and holding the information for interactable building, what we're gonna do is do a check. So just like how we spawn the building, we want, want to check and make sure, we don't really need the building class, but we want to check if interacting building is valid. And if that's the case, we can destroy it. So if interacting building, what we can do is interacting building, destroy instance, and we want to pass in socket data, which should already be holding the correct information. Now we're not clearing out socket data, so this could cause a problem. So just to be on the safe side where we have socket data, we assign it and all that fun stuff, we set all the information that we need, what we can do is, well, actually, let's see, because we're, no, we should be pointing at something because we're holding socket data. And let's see, where are we setting interacting building? Right there. So regardless, if this is valid, we are hitting something. Well, we're hitting what we need to hit. So that there, we know we are good to go. Uh, we want to do a check here, so yeah, that'll be a null pointer if that's not the case. So yeah, we should actually be okay and good to go there. So we have our destroy instance call. We're passing everything we need. Let's go ahead and close down the editor, relaunch, and give it a try. All right, once you're back in the engine, let's go ahead and load up our character blueprint real quick. And we have B for build mode, F for spawn building. Let's do a E. We'll do E. I'm going to bring these down a bit. When E is pressed, we want to destroy 
building in instance like that. On save, hit play, create that. I want to create a wall, and I'll just do one more wall. Okay, so I'm going to press E. Works great. So that's not working. So if we attach it, let's see if that works. Now we press E. So that works. And that's because it's getting a hold of socket data, really kind of how we need it. But it's only getting a hold of socket data if we're snapped to it. So what we need to do is let's head over to our function here where we get the hit building actor from the hit result. Which, let's see, where is that? Oh, that's right there. So if we go there, make sure we're interacting, getting the interacting building. And what we can do is pretty much we can figure out a way to get our hit. So we can kind of set up another function or another way to handle this. Because if you recall, when we were trying to get the sockets and all that kind of stuff, it wasn't always returning the correct index for us due to just some, I guess, kind of general problems. So realistically, what we can do is we have our hit result. We're storing it in the interactable building. What we can do is pretty much just get this hit result again and pass it in to destroy instance. So I don't necessarily, well actually, yeah, I do want to be in building mode, so scratch that. But we can perform line trace and pass this into destroy instance and make use of all the information we need there because that has most of what we want. So for destroy instance, oops, in the building visual, Dot h we're going to make it take in a const f hit result hit result make sure you put that in as the parameter as well here we want to get the component that is actually being hit so we want to do well we actually need to make sure that that is fine too but we want to construct the socket data so we want to do f building socket data building socket data. So what we can do is building socket data dot instance component equals cast. Well, better yet, we could do our check up here as well. So if interactable, interacting building, we want to make sure that's valid before we do anything else. Then we want to do if u instance static mesh component instanced static mesh component equals cast u instanced static mesh component from hit result dot get component. So if that is valid, then we want to assign the instance component to equal the instanced static mesh instanced stat there we go. Instance static mesh component. Then we also want to set the index. So the index is going to be the hit result dot item. We know that from how we tested everything before. And then I think we're just using those two. So the index and the instance. So that is fine. We don't need any more information. And then we just want to pass that into the destroy instance function. So now in base building tutorial character, we can just do perform line trace. Do we have any parameters that we take in distance draw debug, false, so everything default. So what am I using here for the tick? 650, false, so I'm using the defaults. Okay, so that's perfectly fine. So let's close down the editor, yeah, editor, and try again. Okay, back in the editor, hit play, spawn it down, place it. So now when I press E, we destroy it, we destroy it. So now we just spawn pretty much whatever we want. Let's test everything we can out. So let's do our, oh, our walls here. I'm going to place down another foundation so I can hop on top. Place down a wall. Press E. E. And E, 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 and E. So we know that everything is, in fact, working. That's good. So that is, we basically have our destroying kind of set up. We have the function at least set up how we want. So we can kind of take care of some other stuff in other ways. Uh, well, I'll discuss get how, kind of my idea whenever we get to it.
but now we can just destroy. Do everything kind of as we please. I don't have any sort of way to check if anything's connected. I don't know if I'm going to even do that in this tutorial. Because, well, this is getting kind of lengthy. I think we're on video... What are we on? We're on 39 right now. So that's, yeah, it's getting a little long. Anyways, so all we're really doing is in our destroy instance function, we are just getting the instance component that we hit. We're getting the index that we wanted to destroy. And we're just calling destroy index, which is literally just removing the index, and that's it. And we're already testing the instance component from this function here. So ultimately, we don't really need to test it in here any anymore, so we can just remove that if we want to. I'm going to leave it in there because we are going to be making changes, because this is not going to look like that when we are done. Instead, we're going to make it kind of... a uh, in use with the building. So my thoughts were have it set up so we have one of these shapes that has kind of like a cross on it. So that'll just be kind of like a visualizer like, hey, this item is for deleting or destroying instances. So you would switch to it like this, for example, let's say this is the X, and whenever you pressed F, it would just delete it. So something along those lines. That's my idea anyways. So anyways, that is gonna be all for this video. I need to go to bed. So if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patrons, as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos, such as this one. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join the Discord server that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.